Samsung is one of, if not the biggest smartphone manufacturers in the world. We mostly hear about the expensive S and S Ultra flagship devices. However, they're not the only options, and their mid-range A50 line has been gaining in popularity while getting better and better. In this video, we'll compare this year's Samsung Galaxy A54 5G with last year's Galaxy A53 5G to see how much has changed in the year or if it's worth upgrading. Stay for some gaming footage and lots of photo samples to see for yourself. One of the biggest differences is in build quality. Both devices have Gorilla Glass 5 fronts and plastic frame. But while last year's bag is unapologetically plastic, this year's is covered with Gorilla Glass 5. It makes it look more premium than its older brother, but it comes at the cost of weight. A54 weighs 202 grams compared to just 189 grams for the A53. And that's despite the fact that this year's model is slightly shorter as well. It's because of the materials. I have to say that I do like the way how the camera module on the A53 flows with the rest of the back of the device. It makes it a bit different from other designs. On the other hand, the A54 follows the S23 and S23 Ultra designs when it comes to the back and camera unit. The colors are also a bit different this year. With the lime we got a standout for sure. A53 options include more pastel colors, like the blue we have and the orange. But which color you prefer is a very subjective decision. One area where Samsung didn't cut corners is waterproofing, with decent IP67 resistance on both devices. As I mentioned, the A54 is a bit shorter and that's because the A53 screen is a bit longer at 6.5 inches versus 6.4 on the A54. The aspect ratio is slightly different on both as well, but you shouldn't notice it too much, even watching the widest MKBHD videos. Both devices support fantastic Super AMOLED screens, which is luckily a norm with Samsung, and it's great that it extends to mid-range devices as well. The one improvement this year is maximum brightness, with last year's phone rated at peak 800 nits versus this year's 1000 nits, which should make it better for bright sunlight. I have to say that it performed great on my recent holidays in Bali and Greece. But even side by side, there's not a huge difference, as last year's screen was already great, both with brightness, colors, contrast and overall performance. While both devices would definitely be great for watching some YouTube or Netflix on the go, this year's model has a further advantage here. It supports the HDR10 standard, so the experience should be even better. Both devices also offer smooth 120Hz refresh rate, which again is great to see in mid-range devices. The one difference between the two is that A54 now offers adaptive refresh rate, which will make sure the screen is correctly adjusted and will save your battery. Really great to see. On A53, you can only choose between high and standard. Speaking of smoothness, that's where the other major difference is. Last year's model was running Samsung's Exynos 1280, which wasn't the best chipset around, and a lot of people complained that the experience wasn't the best. This year's A54 got bumped to Exynos 1380, which is now on the level of the Snapdragon 778G, a very performant chipset we've seen in the Nothing Phone 1 and many other devices. Conversely, last year's chipset is closer in performance to Snapdragon 695, with a couple of differences, so it won't be as performant as this year's model. Before we show some gaming footage, it's important to know that the A53 we have has 6GB of RAM, while the A54 has 8GB of memory, which might impact performance. So we're not comparing apples to apples, or androids to androids here. Interestingly, for some even higher-end gaming, there wasn't much of a difference. Asphalt Extreme performed at around 30 frames per second on both devices without slowdowns, and it worked great with my game controllers. Even the performance in Call of Duty Mobile was similar on both. You can go as far as high quality and very high frame rate on both devices, and both were close to 60 frames per second without bigger slowdowns. The A53 sometimes went to around 55 frames per second when it got busier or there was more action, but nothing major, better than I expected. 
However, with Genshin Impact, while both performed close to 30 frames per second on the same low graphics settings, I did feel that A53 was feeling a bit sluggish, especially again during fights, and the screen would load slower in the distance, so the experience wasn't great. For comparison, A54 rarely dipped under 31 or 30 frames per second, and the performance was much better here. So if you care about performance, A54 is definitely the way to go. I won't talk much about software here. If you want, check out phone setup and software videos for both phones. Both devices run on Android 13 and Samsung's One UI 5.1, but I actually had to re-record this section a moment before releasing this video because the A54 got the August software patch, while A53 is still on the July patch. However, I'm sure it will receive an update soon, and Samsung is great with keeping their phones up to date, so we should be happy with both devices. As long as you don't mind the slightly cartoonish iconography of Samsung's operating system. Looking at specification, there's not much of a difference in battery or charging either. Both have a 5000 mAh battery, both support charging of up to 25 watts which I wouldn't call supercharging anymore compared to 100W or even 200W competitors, and there's no charger included in either of those. However, thanks to both a more optimized chipset in the A54, as well as the aforementioned adaptive refresh rate, the newer device is likely to keep charge a bit longer. However, I haven't noticed much of a difference myself, both performed great with this large battery and were great secondary devices on my holidays. Unfortunately, neither device supports wireless charging, despite A54 having a glass back, but that's probably to keep the costs down. Other features of the device are mostly similar. Under display fingerprint scanners, lack of headphone jack, similar quality speakers, dual SIM card or SIM plus micro SD, which is amazing to still see here. Both also support 5G connectivity and NFC, depending on the market. The final differences are with cameras. The main camera this year is a 50 megapixel one, as opposed to 64 megapixels last year, but that's not what really counts. It's more about the size of the sensor, as well as the processing of the images themselves. And this year, the sensor is bigger, so it can take a bit more light. To be honest, the photos from both are great, and I'd be happy to use either of them on a trip. And I actually took a lot of my holidays photos this year from the A54. The small differences would be that the photos from the A54 are brighter, but not overexposed, and more natural, while the A53 ones seemed a bit oversaturated for my taste. I think the white balance was also better on the A54, but both did great. Even the shots in low light came out really well, especially for a mid-range device like this. Great job Samsung. And just look at those sunset photos. The A54 sample isn't as bright since the sun came behind the tree a few seconds earlier, but both look great. If you compare the backs, you'll notice one sensor is missing this year, and that's the depth sensor, which is supposed to help with portrait photos. However, both did great, and I took some really nice portrait photos with both, but I actually prefer A54 photos. The subjects are less overexposed in them, they had some nice bokeh balls in the background, and I somehow really like those as well. Both devices sport very similar 12 megapixel ultrawide cameras, and both performed really well. I didn't spot massive differences between them, other than the photos being a bit more oversaturated on the A53, especially for greens. Other than that, really good performance for both, and they both complement the main cameras well. Similarly, both phones have 32 megapixel selfie cameras and both performed really well for normal and portrait shots. Both phones also support a switch between wide and normal shots, which is great if you want to take a photo with someone else or you're interested in the background. Finally, video capabilities are similar on both devices. 4K footage from all lenses and you can actually dynamically switch between main ultrawide and selfie while you're recording, and there's just a bit of delay when switching to the selfie camera. The quality is really good on both devices as well. From what I've seen, the selfie camera has less shake on the A54 compared to A53 and especially some other mid-range devices I tested in the past, so if you film yourself a lot, it might be a nice benefit. 
Stabilization differences are even more pronounced when it comes to 4K main camera video. The A54 footage when walking looks good and is usable, and I'd be happy to post it online, but the same can't be said about the A53, which was much more shaky and difficult to watch. So when it comes to stabilization, this year's model is a clear winner. You could try using electronic image stabilization instead, but it's limited to 1080p and unfortunately the image quality is much worse, so I wouldn't recommend it. So when it comes to video, I say this year's model is a good upgrade for sure. Overall, I'm really impressed with both devices. Both of them are very compelling mid-range smartphones worth checking out. This year's model came with a lot of nice upgrades, like the more premium build, brighter and more dynamic screen, visibly better performance thanks to a better chipset, as well as an improvement in what was already good photo quality. Please note, however, that the 853 is quite a bit lighter and has a larger screen, plus it retains most of the other features of its younger brother. But if I was to pick one of the two, and the prices on offer were similar, I'd go with the A54. We hope you found this video helpful. Let us know in the comments below if you have any other questions about either of those devices. We'll also be releasing our long-term review of the A54 soon, so if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks to see more videos from us. But for now, thanks for watching.